in the moon. I set this in the Seychelles, which you'll hear about, because I lived there when I was eight as a child. My father was the first anthropologist ever to study these islands. And my father very kindly gave me his book of original field notes in this beautiful old book with marble, a marble cover, and all handwritten. And in here are spells and beliefs and, and family structures. So all that background in the novel is quite is carefully researched. The main characters in The Edge of Eden are Penelope and Rupert, who are a young British couple who were children during the war and had both been evacuated and lived apart from their families, very frightened as children. So they meet and marry young and have two little kids and they're very... Uh, they cling to each other in order to give each other comfort. And then suddenly, in the middle of a comfortable life, Rupert announces that he's been posted to these remote islands that Penelope's never heard of in the Indian Ocean, and that they have to leave their flat and their whole life in London and get on a ship and go across the world. Penelope lay in bed for two days after they arrived in Seychelles, sweating in the equatorial heat. She knew she should get up and help the children settle, but she just couldn't. She felt too sick from the boat, too exhausted and too damned angry at Rupert. Rupert and the children were, of course, enthralled. Look at that, they cried over and over in the taxi that took them to their new home, pointing and jabbering as they craned out the windows. Oh, isn't it lovely? And Penelope had to admit it was. Palm trees bold against fathomless blue skies, sands white as teeth, the sea a dancing turquoise, huge round rocks crowning the mountains, swathed in rolling mists, and all of it lit by the bright and spangling sun. But what had it to do with her? Penelope began to feel unwell. What she didn't know was that along with her morning coffee and evening soups, she had been ingesting crushed ant, claw of ghost crab, gecko tail and burnt offerings of her own hair and fingernails, all pounded with a pestle into the finest of powders and finished off with one poisonous red seed. Uh, the poisonous seed that Zara gets, and it's called a Jikerti seed, and it's very pretty, and I got, I've got some here. You can see the little ones there. Um, and they're highly poisonous. And so Zara and her mother go to the local market and Zara sees a necklace of these and she's been told that these are uh, seeds that are used by the witch doctor to poison evil spirits. So she figured she might be able to use it in her magic to kill off the demon worm that she thinks has infested her mother and is making her all cross. Oh, the difference between this and a, and a, a traditional, more old-fashioned colonial novel is that the Seychelles were, are as important characters in the book as the white people are, especially Marguerite, who is the nanny. Marguerite sat back on her heels and watched the top of Zara's head for a minute, that head of tangled hair nobody could brush, under which was a mind full of mystery and mischief. She wondered if the girl had only the sight or if the evil eye had entered her, too, for the child could turn toward darkness if she so chose. My task, she said to herself as she studied Zara, is to turn the child's powers from darkness to light. The reason 
reason it's called the Edge of Eden is because in the mid-1800s, General Charles Gordon, who was famous for having died at Khartoum, landed in the Seychelles and thought it was the most stunning place he'd ever seen. But he was specially taken by a rare plant that grows there and nowhere else in the world, called the coco de mer, which is a coconut tree. And the kernels look very strange. And he took one look at this nut and he decided it must be Eve's original apple, and that the, the tree must be the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, and that he had found the real Garden of Eden. And he went back to Parliament, and he actually told the Houses of Parliament that he's found, he'd found the real Eden, he proved God existed, he'd found Eve's actual apple, and they said, for God's sake, it's a coconut, how is she supposed to have bitten into it? And uh, this is what it looks like. <laughs> so you can see it anyway. It's just a nut, I promise you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Keep drinking the